Okay, so I'm back for round three. We're gonna go ahead and work on getting the um, the rocket outlined tonight. That might be about as much as I get done for the whole evening because I've just eaten supper and I'm feeling kind of sleepy. Um, I had to get black up, that's what I was getting up for. And all these are 3 eighths inch. Um, I've been trying to, you know, kind of hint to Quilted Creations that they should carry 3 8 inch cardstock. Um, so I would suggest to all of you to give them a buzz or to drop them a note and say, Hey, will you, can you carry 3 8 inch cardstock? It's very hard to get and, I mean, cutting your own paper is good, but, you know, finding a good, you know, being able to get a variety of colors is difficult because then you're just, you, you end up buying so much of it. It's like, I don't want to buy a ream of 11 by 17 paper just to cut myself some colored cardstock. I just want one or two packs because that's all I need. There we go. So I think that just to make things easier, the last time I did it, I broke it all up. I'm actually just going to do straight white all the way down. Um, I just want to angle this slightly differently. There we go. I'm just going to do straight white all the way down to here and then come down with black, make the horizontal ones. All right. And I know I keep moving this around. I'm just trying to figure out the best angle to get the... That is what we do sometimes. I wanted to go all the way to there. Perfect. I'll just tap this in the glue again. I may go ahead and um, use my paintbrush to glue it down better in a minute, but right now I'm just going to do it to here. I'm just doing, I'm just pushing from the bottom edge just to keep it, everything pushed up against that, the lip that the edge of the rocket made. I do that sometimes when other the colors peek through at the very base. All right, and this one's gonna start up there. And it's gonna go down to here. I think that one's pretty much the right length too, but I want to just verify it because I'm kind of doing this at a little bit of an angle. Yeah, that's probably good. I need a turntable. My dog is kind of upset because it's raining and he's terrified of the rain. He's just this big, bad, almost borderline aggressive coon hound, very prey driven. But when it rains, oh. He's just, he won't come out. He's just super sad all day long. It breaks my heart. I'm going to spin this and check it from the other side because I don't want to run the chance that it, that it ends up needing to be pushed and it does need a little push. Perfect. Okay, now the next section This right here, we're gonna do this just that section right there. So I want my scrap white. I really love this really super heavy cardstock white. I like it better than the I use I do a lot of I cut my own Cricut paper. Um but I don't like it as much as this. I feel kind of a pain in the butt whenever I get a hold of Aaron and say, hey, can you do more cardstock? Can you do more 3 8 for me? Um, so I kind of put off buying it. Which is why I wish that Build Creations would just carry it, because then I won't have to worry about bugging Aaron to do custom cuts all the time. I'm sure she's fine with it, but I, I know that, you know, she's got a lot on her plate, and 
I'm just gonna do the, the whole end here, the whole side, since I'm kind of in that angle right now. I didn't measure that one right either. I'm gonna come over down there. That's clear. So the quilling group or the paper art group has a bunch of new members this week. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I will admit that I wish that I'd never given up my contemporary quilling group that I'd started um, because, you know, I just, I think I should have just taken some time off as opposed to just giving it up entirely. It was kind of a stupid thing to do, but I was just, you know, kind of depressed at the time and I, uh, it wasn't a good time of my life. But I do rue that decision now because I have spent so, so much time building it and, um, you know, like culturing uh, relationships and whatnot. So I do. I wish that I hadn't done that. But we don't always have the chance to right our wrongs, do we? So now I begin again. And we'll see how we can grow this one. I guess the major difference would be that um, this one will focus on my my own content, as opposed to just being like a you know posting all kinds of pretty quilling stuff. This will just be focused on the content that I'm creating currently and the um, the tutorials that I'm producing and all that fun stuff. My dog is back and off in the um, studio with me. You know, I call it a studio. It's, I mean, I think as long as you one, one piece of advice that I will give all of you is you have to fake it until you make it. Um, I don't have any special talent, really. I mean, I can figure computer programs out and I, and I make things look pretty and whatever, but, you know, the things that I do aren't any more or less special than things that most people can do. The difference, I think, is that how you market yourself and it's like the Danny's Magazine article. You know, I felt kind of like an imposter during the whole process because here I am, I'm just this, I feel like I'm this small town, I'm just a small town girl. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just feel like I'm this, this small town girl and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't always believe in my talent and I see other people's art and I'm like oh my god it's so much better than mine but I guess everyone has a style and my style is pretty much you know I've grown into my style um I just I am me and so when they were wanted to interview me I, I at first I was like well why would they want to why you know like when there's so many other artists in Maine that are just that are so much better in my opinion but I guess that I do occupy a kind of an interesting niche um, paper art so well you know I so the whole point of this here is you fake it till you make it you know you accept opportunities and you you don't say to yourself oh I'm not good you don't say, oh, I'm not good enough or whatever. You say, I am good enough and you promote yourself as though you've already made it, as though you've already accomplished everything. So when you post on social media, you post with confidence and, you know, people will start, will, will see your post and they'll be like, oh, wow, this person's, this person's really 
going someplace. At least this is what I tell myself. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I do believe in faking it until you make it. I, I strongly, strongly agree with that concept. Alrighty, what have we got going here? We have got a mess is what we've got. We have a time mess. The time crunch. Today I went through and I backed up all of my videos and photographs from 2021 and 2022. It took all day. It was almost a, it was almost an entire terabyte of information. I was just shocked. Absolutely shocked at how much I had accumulated. Where's my white paper? The videos take up a lot of space and I just was I got thinking, well what if I lose them? You know, what if my drive crashes? That would really suck. What if I want to go back and edit these later on and I don't have the raw file? So I was like, yeah, I might as well just do something about this or else I'm going to keep obsessing about it. He's really, I mean, I think he's really trying to kill the cat, but he's pounding on her door. He, she has to live in a different area of the house because of him. Yeah, I can hear him. I just heard him pound. I don't know what he did. He like probably body slammed the door because he's, he's a kind of dog that will body slam, which is new to me. I never, I never knew about dogs and body slamming until I had a coon hound and he will just literally go full bear, full barrel across the dog yard and he will launch into you, completely launch into you and just like, like a linebacker or something and go boof and then he has taken my father down, my mother, he has, he has taken everyone down, he is so dangerous like that but it's really quite cute, it's all, it's all excitement, it's not like, you know, he's not being a being a butthole in the sense that he wants to hurt anyone. He's just like, whoa, you people are in my dog yard and I am excited. Oops, I cut a little bit too much off that one. When I cut a little bit too much off these things, you know, I don't even know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I wonder how long it's been like that. I'll edit that out if uh, it turns out that the video was not catching all these little details. So if I make something too small, what I'll do is... I'll uh, see that lift right there? I'll come in here and I'll just go down and I'll be like... Oh, I'm going to cut just a hair behind that lip. And then you get something that's just a teeny bit longer. And that is how I lengthen them if I want to do it easily. I don't go back and remeasure, I just do that because usually it's enough. I can usually gauge how much extra I need to leave on it. In that case, it was about, I don't know, like a third of a millimeter. I love it when you have little scraps like this left um, and you can use them. not quite long enough for that area so I guess I got all excited about being able to use that piece for nothing there we go let's see how that works I think that works out pretty good that's gonna cap off the end of the rocket I do there is a nose cones type thing that sticks up off of it. Um, I'm just going to put that on later. Here. Ta-da! Oops, I'm not done yet. I missed a spot. 
there's this these little spots right here and I'm not quite sure I might just leave them open like that I don't think it really matters and then we have this one I'm just gonna kind of guess where to cut it because it's kind of in a funky area funky location I'm just nipping the base corner off that to give it a slight angle so that it fits and I took too much off for the angle. Try it again. There, yeah, that's better. And now I gotta take about a millimeter and a half off the other end to make it fit. And I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit off this bottom corner. That works pretty good. Not perfect, but that's okay. Because I think what I'm going to do to dress this up is um, I think I'm going to go through and put like a cardstock crimp around all the interior portions just to give it some extra dimension and to hide any of the imperfections. And I don't do it all the time it's just when some stuff has a lot of different angles and there's all kinds of stuff to, to build out um, I will often do that just to hide anything any little gaps that that end up around here all right so I'm I'm actually not going to do different colors so I only have black and uh, white for the 3 8 inch cardstock which I'm going to use to divide all this these areas off so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to do this one first. Measuring with my thumbnail like I always do. And that worked out perfect. Black is more finicky with glue so I tend to try to wipe any excess off. I'm just going to tip it up because like I told you earlier, I like to prop things up like a stud wall in a home. Yeah. And now what I'm going to do to get that to seal to the existing quills, um, I'm just going to go here and paint along the corners. I'm going to kind of hold that one. I popped the other one out when I did that, but I'm going to do that one separately. I just wanted to catch. There we go. And then this one, we'll do the same thing. I'm just going to come in here and just put a little bit of glue there. And then I'm going to press it together just to give a bond. It doesn't have to be a super tight bond. It just has to be a basic bond. I mean, it's just it's just to just to hold it, like tack it. Okay, so the next piece, we're not going to outline the white portion. We're just going to outline the black, and it's kind of a two-step process. So you've got to we have to measure down to where the where this begins to bend, and then we have to create a bend um, here. And I just kind of grab it like that, and then I just tip it like that. I don't want it to get all, I don't want to make a real severe bend because it will buckle the paper because it's cardstock, cardstock buckles really easily. But there, that's all I need right there. And I'm going to come down to the end and I'm going to cut it at the end. And that's a perfect fit. I'll go ahead and get this glued down and we're going to repeat that process for the other side in the middle. And then once that's done, we're going to end the video and we're going to go upload the parts that I've got and I'm probably going to walk the, watch The Walking Dead tonight. I gotta get through season eight so that it um, joins up with Fear the Walking Dead. This part right here is just a straight shot down. I'm only going to 
um, go down to the edge of that. Perfect. Okay, and we're gonna come back here. I'm just going to slide this into place. I'm just tapping the bottom of that to kind of press it in so that I have a nice seal. I don't want to see any other colors peek through on the on the bottom there. Okay, there we go. All right, and now we have to do the weird bendy thing again, so we're going to come down like this. The bend begins right here. I'm just going to push up just to create a little tiny bend. Put it back here to check it. That works fine. And come down here to snip it. And when I touch that, I've got a little bit. I've bent it a little bit. All right. We're doing good. We are making progress. Tomorrow, we can probably get these roses done. Tomorrow's Wednesday. That would be good. I want to tuck that up in there tight, and I want to push that up against that so it seals perfectly, and I'm holding pressure on it so that it, a damn on pressure. Perfect. All right. Next piece, exact same technique. We're going to come down here. We're going to find where the bend is. We're going to just kind of gently bend it where it's supposed to bend. Fit it back in to make sure we got the right angle, which we did. And then come down to the end of this piece of black and cut it. And that's perfect. So this all worked out very well. I didn't have to do any remeasuring so far or recutting. Everything is pretty spot on as far as positioning. It doesn't always work out perfectly like that. There are lots of times where, you know, I just have to fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. I'm gonna check this out over here to make sure that we're tight. We are. All right, home stretch. I'm not doing any of this outside stuff. Tonight, I'm just going to get this outlined. Okay, that one looks good. It's so quiet. I'm holding down my pressure and I'm just going to push in to make sure it's tucked up against that edge. And I dropped my, my last little black here. Oh. And this is the final angled one that we're gonna have to worry about. So we're just gonna put that up against that. The angle begins here. We're just gonna create a little bend there. Put this back in place. Make sure everything looks good. It does. And we're going to cut it. And that came out perfectly too. What I may do after this, or after, you know, at the, at the very end of the project, is go in with the glue and, and tack all the ends to this piece right here just to secure it more. Good. The only part that's not grabbing is right there, so we're just going to give some damage pressure at the very end right here to make sure it sticks. There, look at that. Oh, I just dropped, dumped over my water. It's a good thing I didn't have this there. Because I tell you, you would have heard me crying. All right, there. The bulk of this baby is outlined. I'm going to go ahead.